at this point, our apps UI is more or less functional. You've seen how we can add and remove test expense items, and I've got a new form where we can add custom expense items too. However, the app is far from complete. Any data placed into our new add view struct is completely ignored. And even if it weren't completely ignored, it won't be saved when you quit the app and come back later on. We're gonna fix these problems in order, starting with actually doing something with the data placed inside add view. Now we already have properties in here that store the values in our form. And we also have our observed object, an expenses object passed in from the content view. We've got to put those two things together. We've got to make a button that when tapped, creates a new expense item from these three values and then add it to the expenses items. So we'll say uh, below our form, here in that title here, I'll say the toolbar with a button saying save. And when that's pressed, let item equal the new expense item with a name of name, type of type, and amount of amount. And then append that to the items array, like that. Now, although we have more work to do, I encourage you to run the app now because it's coming together slowly. You can now press plus to see the ad view, and some text in here, for example, lunch and uh, 10, for example, then press save, then swipe down, and you'll see lunch appears in our list. This means our data synchronization is working perfectly. Both the two Swift UI views are reading from the same list of expense items. Now try launching the app again, and you immediately see our second problem. Bang, the data we added is gone. Everything starts blank every time we relaunch the app. This is obviously a pretty terrible user experience, but thanks to the way we have a separate expense class, it's actually not that hard to fix. We're gonna leverage four important technologies to help us save and load data in a clean way. We're gonna use the codable protocol, which allows us to archive all the existing expense items ready to be stored. We're gonna add user defaults, which will let us save and load that archive data. We'll add a custom initializer to our expenses class, so when we make an instance of it, we load any data from user defaults. And finally, we'll add a did set property observer to items, so whenever an item changes, we write out those changes straight away. Let's tackle writing data first. We already have this property here, app published via items in a rare expense item. That's where we store all the expense item structs that have been created. And it's also where we're gonna attach our property observer to write out changes as they happen. This takes four steps in total. We're gonna to make an instance of JSON encoder that will do the work of converting our data uh, into JSON. We ask that to try encoding our items array, and then we can write that out to user defaults using a key of our choosing, items. So we'll say this thing had a did set observer. We'll say let encoder equals a new JSON encoder. If let encoded equals try question mark encoder.encode our items, then user defaults dot standard dot set encoded for key items. Now, if you're following along live, and I hope you are, you'll see this code does not compile. And you'll have noticed I said <laughs> it takes four steps then listed only three steps, but you're only following really close for that one. The problem is that encoder.encode can only archive objects that conform to the codable protocol. Remember, conforming to codable is what lets the compiler generate code for us to handle archiving and unarchiving. That's the point of it. And if you don't add a conformance to that, our code won't build. In this case, helpfully, all we have to do is go back to expense item and add a codable conformance like this. It conforms to codable. Swift already has codable for UUID and string and double. So it's able to make expense item conform to codable automatically as soon as we ask for it. However, it will warn and currently is warning that ID will not be decoded because we made it a constant and assigned the default value. This is actually here the behavior we want. 
as the correct behavior. But Swift's trying to be helpful. Swift's saying, it's possible you did plan to decode this value from JSON. And so, be, are you sure it's what you mean? To make the warning go away, just declare it as variable. And it now understands it can be overwritten if it exists in the data, otherwise it won't be. With that code, we've written everything we need to make sure items are saved out when the user adds items. That code will now build correctly. However, it's not effective by itself. The data might be saved, but it's not loaded again when the app relaunches. To solve that, and also make our code compiled fully across the board, we're going to implement a custom initializer here for our expenses class. This will attempt to read the items key from user defaults. It'll make an instance of JSON decoder, which is the counterpart of JSON encoder that go, goes from data, JSON data, to Swift objects. We'll then ask the decoder to convert the data we received from user defaults into an array of expense items. Then if that worked, assign that to our items. And finally, make it an empty array otherwise. So we'll say and initialize it in here, inside expenses. We'll then go ahead and attempt to read the data from user defaults for the key items. So if let saved items be user defaults dot standard dot data for key items, capital I. Great, we have data here. Can we decode that? We could say if let decoded items be try JSON decoder dot decode. And now we've got to tell it what we expect to receive. What will this be? In our case, it'll be an array of expense item dot self from the saved items data. If that worked, then items equals decoded items and return. But if we're here, it means either we found nothing in user defaults or we couldn't make it into an array of expense item. It's not valid. Items is an empty array instead. So the first part here, read data from user defaults for the key items. Whatever's in there, come back and it's optional. It might not exist. It could be nil, nothing in there, in which case it won't run. If we can read that, attempt to decode it as an array of expense item here, converts data into a particular type of Swift. Now it's very common to do a bit of a double take right here. Array expense item dot self. What does this dot self mean? Well, if we just said expense item, Swift would want to know what we meant. Are we trying to make a copy of that array? Are we trying to make a new one? Or we plan to reference a, a static property or a method or who knows what? It can't tell. So to avoid confusion, we say, I'm referring to that array type itself. The array of expense item as a thing, as a type all by itself. That's what I mean. Not a particular array of expense items, but just the idea of array of expense items in the first place. We write self after it. Notice how, by the way, we've put JSON encoder dot decode directly. We could do the same thing with encoder as well. If you prefer this style of writing, because we aren't configuring it, we just make it and use it straight away. Also works. But now that we have loading and saving in place, we can finally start to use the app. So I'll press plus up here. I'll add lunch. I'll say lunch was expensive today, 12 bucks, and then press save. We should now swipe away and see lunch is saved in there. I'll go back to the home screen and it'll still be in there when we go back to the app. I'll then relaunch the app and all being well, it will remember, bang, lunch is right there. It's not quite finished yet though. Let's add some final polish.